Don't you dare call the police. If you do that, I won't forgive you. My usually gentle husband yelled at me with a fierce expression on his face. I stopped my hand from making a phone call and stared at my husband. Don't call the police, he said. But my mom is missing, you know. Her dementia could put her in danger, like a car accident or something. I'm saying you were just overreacting. She'll come back when she's ready. I couldn't shake the feeling of doubt about my husband's argument. Then he attacked me further. You know what? I've been meaning to say this for a while, but your nervousness is making her dementia worse. Don't move around too much and wait for her to come back. He left me dumbfounded, and went back to his room. Does he really care about my mother's safety? I felt betrayed by someone who was important to me, and was in shock. I have to go look for her now. I pushed aside my sadness and started searching for places where my mother might be. This wasn't the first time my mother disappeared. It started a few months ago. What? My mother? Okay, I'll come right away. The call from the police was just like a bolt from the blue. They had found my mother under the overpass. I grabbed only my cell phone and wallet and hurried to the location they had given me. When I arrived, a young police officer was standing by my mother's side. He bowed slightly and he noticed me approaching. My mother had a vacant expression, but there was a gentle smile on her face. That somehow made me uneasy. Thank you for your help. I really appreciate it. Mom, come on, let's go home. Lisa, what's wrong? My mother seemed to have only just noticed my presence. I realized it would be best not to take her home, so I took her to the hospital instead. The diagnosis was dementia. I thought I was prepared, but when the doctor told me. I felt like I had been plunged into a deep, dark hole. I hesitated about whether to tell my mother, but I knew it would affect her daily life, whether she knew or not. So I gathered my courage and told her. She seemed to resign herself to the news, and just said, "I see." Although her symptoms has just begun, I decided to send her back to her home for now, since they were not so severe. When I returned to my family home for the first time in a while, I was shocked to see so many shopping bags. Mom, why do you have so many shopping bags? Well, you see, I've been forgetting things a lot lately. My mother said in a serious tone and began to tell me about what had happened recently. It seems that she has been buying seasonings and stationery repeatedly. And has also become forgetful about small things, such as forgetting to lock the front door or flush the toilet. However, she couldn't bring herself to tell anyone because she thought they would worry. When I heard about it, I almost cried. If only I could create a more comfortable atmosphere for her to talk to me. I regretted it, but I couldn't turn back time. All I can do now is to do what I can. After returning home, I reported what happened today to my husband Bo. That's why I want to live with my mother. Bo replied without even looking at me, watching TV. Well, that's just impossible, isn't it? Well, you don't have to say it like that. When I raised my voice, he sighed as if it was troublesome. We don't have money, and we can't take care of her in such a condition. She may be your parent, but she is a stranger to me. I don't want my hard-earned house to be filled with filth, you know. Although I wanted to argue with my husband's terrible attitude, I held back. If I fought with him now, it would really make it difficult for me to take care of my mother. My husband continued to bombard me with words, knowing or unknowingly about my feelings. When my parents were sick. I didn't cause you any trouble, did I? That's why this conversation is over. When his parents fell ill, 
his siblings worked hard to take care of them. However, I remember how Bo behaved shamelessly during the funeral, as if he had done all the hard work himself, thinking that I couldn't rely on my husband any further. I decided to go to my parents' house and take care of my mother myself. From that day on, I started a busy life of household chores, part-time work, and caregiving. I consulted with the local government and managed to find some service that could be used within the scope of my mother's pension. However, there were limits to what they could provide, and I began to feel physically and mentally exhausted. No matter how hard I tried, my mother's dementia continued to progress. There were days when she didn't even recognize me, and just verbally abused me. It was heartbreaking to see my once gentle mother change like this, and on such days I cried while taking care of her. Eventually, I had no choice but to quit my part-time job. On the night I quit. I tried to discuss the idea of putting my mother in a care facility with my husband, but he dismissed it. She's your parents, so you should take responsibility for her and figure out the money too. I wonder why I was with someone like him, but it was true that without his income, it would be difficult for me to live on my own. Now that I had quit my job, I was even more dependent on his money. Although we have some savings, I couldn't use them recklessly, as I had to consider the future. Feeling like there was nowhere to run, I felt suffocated. And then one day, Mom, where are you, Mom? When the caretaker had her day off, my mother disappeared somewhere. As I searched desperately, the neighbors who heard my voice helped me. Eventually, the police came, apparently because the neighbors called them. Thank you all so much. I'm sorry. While I was searching frantically, I suddenly thought of something. Come to think of it, I haven't checked the park that Dad loved so much yet. Before he passed away, he used to take walks there with my mother. The park was on their usual walking route, on the outskirts of town. I went to the park with a glimmer of hope. Mom, oh, Lisa. My mother looked at me with a nonchalant expression. I hugged my mother while crying. The mother I hugged felt much smaller, which made me cry even more. After thanking the people who helped me search for my mother, I returned her to her house. My mother seemed tired and fell asleep right away. When I returned home exhausted, my husband was lying on the sofa. Without trying to hide his irritation, he clicked his tongue at me. Huh? I heard she was at the park this time. You made a big fuss. You should have looked for her properly before calling the police. If you knew, you could have helped me, couldn't you? Huh? I'm tired from work. I'm different from you, who have nothing to do every day. I felt something snap inside me at those words. While looking at his back, I decided that I wanted a divorce. However, an event occurred that shook my resolve. Suddenly, my husband started helping with everything. He would take the initiative to drive and buy bulky items like diapers and water. He even changed the furniture arrangement at my parents' house to make it safer. Although I was initially taken aback by the sudden change, the fact that he was helping me reduced my burden considerably. Not only did I feel physically revealed, but also felt that I wasn't alone. Which helped me recover mentally. My husband no longer got angry when I had to leave the house all day for caregiving on holidays. I didn't know what caused the sudden change, but it was definitely appreciated. In the midst of my lonely struggle, it felt like a ray of hope had pierced through. Those days continued for a while. 
and then my mother left the house again. When I heard Li try to find her, my husband stopped me. Calm down, she'll come back. It's possible, but something might happen this time. We should report it just in case. As soon as I said that, my husband's expression changed. Don't you dare call the police! I won't forgive you if you do. He shouted with a fierce expression. My hand that was about to make the call stopped completely when I saw his face. He must have noticed my change of expression, and forced a smile. Nah, I mean, if we report, she will get hurt, you know. She's probably just around here somewhere as usual. With that, my husband hastily went back to his room. His shouting voice continued to ring in my ears, and I couldn't shake it off. So I slumped down where I was. I clenched my fist tightly, and tried to calm myself down before leaving the house to look for my mother. As I walked around looking for her, I spotted her coming out of a convenience store near the house. I rushed over to her and saw that she was carrying a shopping bag. Mom, what are you doing here? Lisa, I just came to buy some snacks and tea. You need them when you have guests over, don't you? We already have more than enough at home, but I just couldn't resist. I bit my tongue and tried to force a smile. You're right. Let's go back home. Oh, and you want one, Lisa? I shouldn't leave my mother alone for too long. I knew my husband might object, but I thought it would be better for us to live together. When we got home, I could hear my husband talking on the phone. What are you doing? We arranged to do it today. Since the helper was off. Come on, don't tell me you forgot. Bo, what is he talking about? I thought something was suspicious, so I deliberately made some noise. As I entered the house, my husband quickly hung up the phone, and put on a fake smile, as he let my mother inside. That night, I got up quietly so as not to wake my mother and my husband. I used fingerprint authentication to open his phone, and looked at his messages. There were a lot of exchanges with a woman named Amber, and from the contents. It seemed like she was his mistress. There are mountains of photos of luxurious restaurants and trip that they went together, uploaded on the message app. I wonder where all this money is coming from for such extravagance. I hastily checked our joint account balance, and was surprised to find that it had decreased by more than half. Surprisingly calm. I try to imagine the situation and my husband's intentions. He was cheating on me with Amber, and was spending money on her. But that wasn't enough. He intended to take my mother's life insurance with Amber's help. He probably planned to use my mother's wandering to cause an accident. I quickly saved evidence of his affair, and made up my mind to divorce him no matter what. Later, a friend introduced me to a lawyer, and I also tried to keep a diary, and increased the number of days I had caretaker. I collected as much evidence as possible to trail my husband, and eventually, Amber's true identity came to light. She was the wife of a man named Ricky, who was my husband's colleague. I was stunned. By the unexpected double affair, I somehow managed to make contact with Ricky, and set up an opportunity to talk. Ricky also suspected Amber of cheating, so we provided each other with evidence. Amber was a former caregiver and knew how to deal with the elderly with dementia. Ricky said that she probably planned a strategy. I was clear that they were trying to cause an accident to get my mother's life insurance. I told Ricky that I wanted to stop them and arrest them on the spot, and he agreed to help me willingly. 
several days later. We're taking off for walk. Shall we? Yes, yes. I watched with a smile as my husband and my mother left. I secretly attached a voice recorder and GPS to my mother's clothes, and followed behind them so they wouldn't notice. My husband pulled my mother to the park without waiting for her to respond. Then, brought her to the middle of a path, and tried to leave. What are you doing, Bo? Huh? Look, Lisa. Where are you planning on going? Leaving my mom. No, no, it's not like that. This is. At that moment, another couple appeared, essential to the plan. Ricky grabbed Amber's arm, and stood her in front of my husband. He threw her bag on the ground, and the bottle of sleeping pills spilled out. My husband realized there was no turning back and kneeled on the ground. We we weren't planning on causing any harm. We just wanted to put her to sleep and leave her somewhere far away. What? That's already harmful. What are you thinking? It seems that they were planning to abandon her in an unfamiliar place, hoping that she would get into an accident, so that they could receive the insurance money. He believed that he could then live happily ever after with Amber on the run. Ricky and I were both disgusted, and immediately told them we wanted a divorce. Although they couldn't be charged with actual kidnapping or harm, we wanted to end our marriage with these people as soon as possible. My mother stood there, looking like she couldn't understand anything that had just happened. I took her hand and left the scene. A few years later, Ricky came to visit me. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. It's the least I can do. In the photo displayed on the altar, my mother was beaming with a smile. Thanks to the voice recorder I had on my mother's clothes, we had the evidence we needed to claim compensation. Around the same time, Ricky changed his job and became an influential employee at a large corporation in the industry. As a result, my ex-husband's bad reputation spread throughout the industry. And he could not find work in the same field. It seems that once he became unemployed, his relationship with Amber became strained. After all, she was only interested in his money. As the progression of dementia advanced, my mother peacefully passed away three years after I started taking care of her. In her final years, she was unable to recognize me. However, she said, "Thank you, Lisa," before falling asleep for the last time. Despite all the hardships, I felt a profound sense of loneliness and emptiness after her passing. I served Ricky some tea, and we chatted for a while before he asked me a question. "What are you going to do now, Lisa?" Hmm. To be honest, I don't know. I've lost both my parents. Got divorced and ended up alone, but maybe this is a new beginning for me. I've gained freedom, even though I've lost a lot. Well, I'm thinking of traveling to the places where my parents have fond memories. That sounds like a great idea. As we talked, I felt like the photo of my parents on the table was smiling at us. <laughs>